Joining me live in the studio is the Green Senator Janet Rice. Thanks for your time. You, you've had a busy morning, You're thrown out of the, out of the House, House of Reps. Reps. You're not normally in there, but... Uh... No, it was the joint sitting um, to hear from President Mark Austin. And you weren't things. happy that he was invited? I was appalled that he was invited to address our parliament. These are the, we've just got the pictures of, of your, your protest. It... Uh, was Basically, the you, sign that pretty I, much a silent protest. You held up the yeah, sign. Yeah, it was. It, it was. Um, yeah, I wasn't wanting to cause a fuss, but I felt I really needed to make a statement about the human rights abuses that are continuing in the Philippines under President Marcos. He's continued the policies of his predecessor, um, Duterte. There's currently an international criminal court investigation into the practices and the thousands of killings under Duterte's presidency. Under Marcos, we've still got the same extrajudicial killings. Um, human rights defenders, environmentalists, workers, trade unionists being jailed. Um, we've got, ex yeah, killings. So you, you don't believe he should have been invited to he address should not the parliament? Have been invited. It was whitewashing the appalling human rights abuses that are going on under, under his government. He, he hasn't been president for that long. Is there, is there rock solid evidence that they, those extrajudicial Absolutely. killings, the abuses under Duterte, are continuing now? Absolutely. And that they're the people who are responsible for those killings are not being brought to to account. Essentially, the judicial system is broken and that under the guise of anti-terrorism, you've still got massive attacks, you've got bombings of regional communities. And the reason I did it was because of the Filipino community here in Australia. They reached out to me. There were a number of open letters that were sent to all parliamentarians asking parliamentarians to really note what the appalling human rights record of President Marcos is. And, 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 and the whitewashing of the dictatorship of his of his father as well. Yeah, well, we, we do remember uh, his father. Uh, well, some of us do. Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, when you held the sign up, you were then... What happened? You were escorted out? Um, How did yes, that there, was a, there was a note from the Speaker that was sent to me with the Sergeant of Arms asking me to leave the chamber because oh, okay. of disorderly conduct. So I was proud to have been there to hold up the sign and I left the chamber. Oh, okay. So as you weren't asked. escorted out, you just received a note and. Yes, well, followed. the Sergeant of Arms escorted me out. Okay. Yeah. But you followed the, mm. uh, and the look, request. Yeah, and to me, I mean, I speak up for human rights abuses wherever they occur in the world, whether it's the Philippines, whether it's China, whether it's here in Australia, you know, Myanmar, Afghanistan, and I really felt it was my responsibility to be speaking up for did really you, did brave people. Did you have a second people. thought, though, in terms of the fact that it was a big moment in Australia-Philippines um, relations? You look, uh, no, and I really support the Filipino community. I really want to emphasise how I've got a huge amount of respect and support for the Filipino community and the people of the Philippines, but they deserve better um, as in their government than people who are... You, know, you weren't worried that it would undermine our efforts to build look, ties with Manila? We need to have human rights at the centre of all of our relationships with other countries. If we turn a blind eye to human rights, that's an attack on democracy and it's an attack on ourselves because human rights matter no matter where people are living in the world. Um, just uh, as I said, you've got a big day <laughs> thrown out of the House <laughs> of Reps, but you've also um, got today the anti-poverty report. Right. We've spoken about it before. What's it found? Yes, well, yesterday we tabled the final report of my inquiry, the Senate Community Affairs Committee's inquiry into the extent and impact of poverty in Australia. And it's the number one recommendation of the majority report of our committee was that there needs to be urgent action to address um, poverty in Australia to ensure that people aren't living in poverty. How widespread and, is it? Oh, it's, it's appalling. There are millions of Australians who are just struggling to live, who struggle to decide whether they're going to put food on the table or pay for their medical bills. And exacerbated people, by the, the cost cars. of living That's right. prices Families now. living in cars with, with children. We're better than this as a country. You know, we're a rich country and it's the fundamental thing we need to do is to be completely overhauling our social security system so that people have got enough income support so they can live, whether they are on the DSP, whether they are between jobs, whether they are struggling with, with their health. People should be able to live with dignity and not be living in poverty. Senator Janet Rice, thanks. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Kieran.